What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with some more Scrap Mechanic, and if you guys watch any other Scrap Mechanic channel, you're going to know that DevVlog22 just came out, has some good features to talk about, so I just wanted to kind of go through the things and just comment on a few of the things I saw, and you know, it's probably going to be honestly one of my shorter videos. So, of course, we jump right into DevVlog22, it focuses mostly on the underground stuff, and uh, of course those sticky wheels that we had seen the devs tease on Twitter. So High Mechanics is that special time again where we open up and show some of the content we've been working on at the Scrap Mechanic HQ. This is probably one of the most exciting dev vlogs we've done in a while. It's literally like the only dev vlog they've done in a while. But anyway, as we will be showing off our new digging system, we're sorry for the long rate, but the features in this dev vlog have been in the making for a while. We've also been working on a lot of story related things that we don't want to spoil for you. So we won't reveal everything just yet, which is kind of what I figured. Chapter 2, they did say in a previous dev vlog they were going to introduce some questing systems. And they're not going to give away any of that, which is kind of cool. Um, so let's crack open a sunshake and dig in. Obviously, we get into a bunch of uh, sort of, I don't know, GIFs, GIFs. Uh, people say it all sorts of different. I don't really, I'm not getting into that debate. You can, you can pronounce it however you want. It doesn't matter to me. But anyway, we got a bunch of animated pictures here of the digging. And I don't really know what people think of this. The first thing that comes to mind for me when I see these plasma drills on this vehicle digging through rock is first of all it's cool that we can dig through rock second of all it looks a lot like kind of digging in space engineers if you've ever played space engineers and you dig on an asteroid to like dig through the rock and stuff this is kind of what it feels like except you're not driving a car usually you're floating in a spaceship so that's the first thing that came to mind for me i mean you know let me know what you guys think in the comments down below other games i think astroneer kind of has a similar sort of system with low poly and terraforming and stuff so i think that's kind of cool I don't know if this means we're going to be able to terraform in the overworld. It seems like this underground, I guess, it would almost be like the equivalent of Scrap Mechanics, like, version of Minecraft Nether, and that you're going to have to go to the underground through some sort of gate or whatever. Maybe it'll be all in one thing, or I don't know. I have a feeling you're going to have to load it kind of like going through an elevator loads a warehouse, that kind of deal, and you'll probably only be able to terraform underground and not be able to terraform in the, you know, let's call it the overworld. Although I would really like to see terraforming in the main survival world. I think that would be really cool, especially like making roads, that sort of thing. So you can see more pictures. We've obviously got the goop wheels. In case you guys didn't see, the devs did post a picture of these goop wheels on their Twitter a week ago when they announced that a dev blog was coming out. So it's kind of cool. The sticky wheels, uh, it seems they consume chemicals. It's kind of pictured at the back. And, you know, overall, I think it'll be pretty good as long as they do a good job of balancing the chemicals. I really hope in Chapter 2 they tweak the thruster consumption because the thrusters consuming fuel is absolutely ridiculous. And I hope they don't make these wheels the same thing because chemical wheels consuming too much. I mean, what happens if you're halfway up a wall and then your wheels give out? You know what I mean? Like, it would just be a nightmare. The only other thing I've really thought about with this driller is I'm very curious about how they're getting these camera angles. Um, there's kind of an issue in Scrap Mechanic when you have a creation that's like welded to the ground or kind of through the ground and you try and take a camera angle of it, the camera pushes itself like away from the ground, if that makes sense. So the camera gets like, it's really, it's hard to explain, but the camera gets really, really zoomed in and kind of screwed up and hard to see. But these camera angles like seem to be fine, even though it's digging a tunnel. So I'm not sure if that means they fixed that a little bit, or maybe they've played around with the camera angles, or maybe the camera just doesn't care about the underground terrain. I'm not sure. But either way, a really, really good camera angle. So I'm hoping that it stays like this throughout the game. The other thing that'll be interesting too is if there's going to be a way to figure out which way you're oriented. Like if you look at this image here, you can't really tell which way is up because you've got sticky wheels. You know, up could be in any direction. I guess actually that's not true. The scrap mechanic camera always stays upright. Never mind, you can just orient yourself with the camera. That would be, that would be easy. So obviously we get into the cave system here. I'm not exactly sure how the caves are going to work. Um... You know, it looks all right. The textures are kind of weird. They did have a note somewhere. I'm not sure if it's in this dev blog. Might not have gone to it yet. That the lighting and stuff isn't final form yet. They also mentioned that they're going to have the green goop not potentially be green. And then, of course, we've got this underground facility and more of this underground facility. And then just some concept art of other pieces. This looks like some moving platforms and, I don't know, some sort of a conveyor grinder chute. And then we've got this explanation. So, of course, they include the explanation at the end, but we'll talk about it. So, underground digging and exploration. 
The new chapter will come with a brand new island housing a huge collapsed mine and a massive mystery. And see, I think you're gonna have to go into the collapsed mine and that's gonna bring you into like the underground zone per se, right? The new location that you will get to explore will contain a lot of new content and underground biomes. Once in it, you will have to create a mining vehicle and start digging for resources while uncovering small and large cave systems. What I find interesting about this is once in it, you will have to create a mining vehicle. So I wonder if the entrance to the underground doesn't let you actually fit like a vehicle in it. Although we've jammed tanks into the warehouse, so we're going to try that, whatever the entrance is. But I have a feeling they might limit what you're allowed to bring through the entrance to the underground. I'm not sure, but that's what that kind of says to me. Some parts of the mines will require a special type of drills to get past. In some cases, explosives will be needed. We put a lot of work into making a vehicle digging into a fun and creative experience. So I guess the question is going to be, they've obviously were using the new plasma drills that they had showed. The question is going to be, will you be able to use the, I don't know, the regular drills and they'll just be weaker or will you not be able to use them at all? And of course, in some cases, explosives will be needed. So that's kind of cool. Uh, here are a few shots showing the underground digging and exploration in action for the first time. You can also get a first glimpse of a very dangerous place, the underground station. Uh, keep in mind, these shots don't have the correct lighting and particles yet, so everything will look better in the final version. So that's what I was talking about before. Again, these are the underground station. It seems like they've got this thing here, this master battery. So you have to eject it and take the master battery. And my interpretation is you have to dodge like bots, whatever explosive bots, all that nonsense, and protect the master battery and get it to this gate, which then opens up... I don't know, either the way out or the way into the mine or something. I'm not sure, but it seems like that's the idea here is you have to take this master battery and feed it to the gate. So I don't know. To be honest, this looks like a lot of concept art. It looks pretty cool. I'm a pretty big fan of it. I think, you know, this looks really neat. Um, it does look kind of like just a warehouse underground. I mean, look at those are the crate sizes there. So it's really quite massive and really cool. Of course, the most obvious thing in this update is the sticky wheels. We've got a couple animations here that just fantastic. I love this. So you can clearly tell uh, they're using some sort of a chemical container or whatever to deal with the sticky wheels. And you can see they can be activated and deactivated, which I think is fantastic. So you can use them as regular wheels and then, you know, turn on the stickiness, which I think is great. And of course, this right here is the animated picture that they showed on Twitter. Um, just, you know, them trying to climb a rock and failing horribly. And finally, we've got a picture of one climbing a building, which is going to be, you know, super efficient for getting those component kits at the top of the building. You can tell it's got a chemical, you know, hookup to it. I don't know what all these extra pipes are for. No idea if that's necessary or not. Uh, but, you know, it's got them all. And of course, we've got the sticky wheels underground with our plasma drills on that plasma drill vehicle. Can we just talk about, too, the fact that the devs, when they make these vehicles... They put like, look at this, they put arms, like steering arms with the bearing at the inside of the vehicle rather than the bearing above the suspension. Like they give it literally the worst chance at being a successful vehicle. You know, everything I've learned about Scrap Mechanic is never put your steering on like a huge arm so that they sway all the way out. But you know what? These are the devs. Maybe, maybe I'm actually building it wrong and I should be doing it this way the entire time. A sticky Wheels update. Here's a little update on the Sticky Wheels we've shown previously. We really love how they've turned out. They really work well and have a nice gooey look when you drive. You will definitely need these when digging in the mine. They are. They will also most likely have a pink slash purple colored goo by default instead of the yellow green that we've shown. Uh, we are also looking into letting you paint them in other colors. What I'm curious about is they're going to have Sticky Wheels that run on chemicals, right? But downward thrust is still a thing. Like, you could still put thrusters on a vehicle in survival. So if they tweak the fuel usage, then the question will be, is downward thrust as effective as sticky wheels? Or maybe a combination of downward thrust and sticky wheels? I mean, it depends. Right now, I think with the way fuel consumption is, downward thrust is an absolutely terrible idea. But it is possible to make a vehicle that just climbs, you know, as a, as a wall climber with downwards engines. So that might be an interesting balance that they have to work out. Currently, the sticky wheels use chemicals as a resource, but we are still testing them out once we can get the perfect balance between consumption and use time. The interesting thing with Scrap Mechanic, I find, is they're gonna start running into issues where, you know, stuff like controller engines and things that don't consume power, piston engines, stuff like that. Are they gonna balance that or not? Like, do they care to balance that with the game? I honestly personally don't care. If you wanna have a game where it gives you tons of different options and one option is more efficient than the others, that's great. Like, people can choose whichever option suits them the best for the situation. It doesn't matter to me. I can understand the desire to make it that there isn't always one option that's the best, 
per se, but it doesn't honestly matter to me if, for example, Downward Thrust becomes better than Sticky Wheels, or Sticky Wheels becomes better than Downward Thrust. Like, you know, I would use them depending on what I feel like doing. Like, if I had an abundance of chemicals, I'd use Sticky Wheels. If I had an abundance of fuel, I would use Thrusters, right? So that's sort of the way I would do it. Of course, we get now into these Swarm Bots. I love these things. They look great. They look terrifying. Um, I think, I don't, I, like, regular Spud Gun, bro. It should be the Shotgun. Or the Spudling Gun, I would imagine. I don't know why you would try and take on individual Swarm Bots with a single gun. But anyway, you can see they're, uh, they're swarming. Seems like they swarm the vehicle. I don't know if they do damage to the vehicle. It doesn't look like they actually hit anything. They just kind of freak out around it. And, like, they swarm... They, like, group up on the vehicle. So I'm not sure if they do damage or how that works. And you can see some more screenshots of these Swarm Bots all over this vehicle. Which just has a chemical container and then some electric containers and a storage container. So, cable bot update. The cable bots are really starting to shape up. Buried deep in the underground of the collapsed mine. These clankers. Clankers. That's an interesting description for them. Come out in great numbers, attacking both you and your creations on site. So, they do attack your creations, but it didn't seem like it does damage. Sometimes they might latch onto your creation and gradually eat away at it. Oh, so they gradually chew it. Other times they might simply leech off your battery or fuel resources. Oh, that's cool. That's interesting. So they like, they pile up on your creations and they suck your creations dry of fuel and, and gas. I actually really like that. And they don't do a lot of damage on their own, but when you have a bunch of them, they do more damage. That actually kind of feels like a swarm bot. So that's why we weren't seeing them do damage to this vehicle just yet. I guess they hadn't fully swarmed up. That's really cool. I like the fact that they'll steal resources. I think that's a really, really cool idea. Then, of course, we move on to this thing, which is sick. An electric generator. It, it's absolutely amazing. I love this. This is so cool. Battery generator. Electric engines and other things requiring batteries will be very useful during your time underground. And when you're in need of batteries, there's nothing more useful than a battery generator. This is something I've been saying since the beginning. I thought it was going to be like solar panels, honestly. I thought you'd put a solar panel out during the daytime. It would collect batteries. At night, it wouldn't do anything. I thought that would be kind of cool. Uh, it's not a solar panel that are using a battery generator. So simply place a battery container inside of it, spin the red valve, and the battery charger will generate new batteries. You can spin manually by hitting the valve with a hammer, or if you'd rather save time, you can also create a gas engine powered arm that will spin the valve for you. We plan to introduce more interactive parts in the future with new creative ways to interact with them like this one. We can't wait to show you how these parts will spark your creativity. Now, me being the terribly balanced gamer that I am, as soon as I saw this, I thought of one thing, which is you put a controller on a 360 degree loop on the other side of that generator and you have infinite power for life, right? Because a controller spinning on a 360 degree loop with a switch on will spin forever with zero fuel consumption and it will generate power because it's spinning that red arm. So I don't know if the devs are gonna deal with that. I personally think that controllers and pistons should require a very, very small amount of power to function. Um, I think it's kind of like, it, it makes sense that in survival, controllers and pistons would consume batteries. I know it would require people to remake a lot of their creations, but it would make sense, like on a logistics level, if controllers and pistons had some sort of a fuel consumption, even if it was really low. Like, it should be really low because you use controllers and pistons a lot, but it should still be there. Um, and then, of course, you run into the issue, well, if I put a controller spinning this red lever, does it generate more power than it consumes? And if so, I've created a, you know, a perpetual motion machine, right? So I don't, like, I don't envy them at all trying to balance this because obviously this is super cool. I think it's great that you can generate batteries. Batteries are a pain in the butt to craft and, you know, it just requires a lot of effort to get them. So this is a great part, this generator. And I love the fact that it's an interactive part, like something that you can actually physically spin a red knob, but I think it's gonna be really hard for them to balance. I, again, like I said before, I personally don't care if they just leave it up to the player and they say, hey, you know what? If you want to have an infinite controller powering a battery power, like, go nuts. That's on you. You know what I mean? But if they're trying to, you know, make the game, I guess, with some sort of weird scale difficulty, then that's something they're gonna have to think of, which is like, what do you do about piston engines, which are free, and controller engines, which are free? Even suspension glitch engines are free, right? You can make a suspension glitch that jams it into a circle, and that'll spin this thing no problem. Again, all on free energy. So, I don't really know how they'd balance that, or what they could possibly do to fix it, but it's just something, food for thought, something to think about anyway. And I think it's still a really, really cool part that I'm really excited to try out. I think the most exciting thing about this update, and maybe this is just me, is the signs, digital signs. We finally got around to adding digital signs in late game survival. You often end up with a lot of chests. Tell me about it. It's literally a nightmare. 
These signs will let you label things so that they're easy to find. Not just that, they can also be used to leave a message and help decorate your creations. They come in three sizes with a selection of customizable screen and text colors. This needed to be done like six million years ago. Um, a wall of chests with signs like, you know, uh, that's just that's just standard. We also need a sorter for chests too, like an auto sorter. I know there's ways to do it in vanilla and uh, you know by like putting one of each item in the inventory and all that sort of thing. And then I know there's also mods for it too, but the devs definitely need a sorter or like a filter on chests or something so we can have these and then also sort what they are. Either way, signs definitely needed will be fantastic. Um I think it's great. Now, I know Scrapman's going to be excited about this because literally all he cares about is wedges, but we've got the wedge update. Shout out to the wedge gang. The devs, I guess, didn't work on wedges in survival because they were making scalable wedges, which I agree with. Scalable wedges, I think, is like a great thing. I mean, we've had scalable bricks for years, so I'm not saying that bricks are better than wedges, but like bricks have already had this functionality and wedges are finally just evolving to get it. So if we're counting score, I think bricks are already super far ahead of wedges we've got a lot of requests about adding wedges and we're trying to find a good way of implementing them so here's a little update on what we have so far the problem has been the wedge scaling and removal in survival it's a different system from the simple block scaling but we keep testing things out and hopefully we'll find a good way that works in survival the wedges will be included in the next chapter i can understand why this is an issue and the reason why is like if you look at this picture they're scaling the wedges right but if you think of the way you place blocks, let's say you're placing a triangle of blocks to make that wedge. You place each part of the triangle individually, and then you have one, you know, net triangle. And depending on how many blocks you put, it's going to be like a 45 degree slope, 30 degree slope, whatever. But with a wedge, you have all these intermediate points, and you're going to have like an intermediate hitbox. Depending on how long and how big you make the wedge determines the angle that it's at. And that's going to, you know, really affect how many blocks of space that wedge takes up. So it's going to be an interesting thing for the devs to not only make it removable by some like right click or something like that, but also make the hitbox accurate. Because if you make a wedge that's large, but then the car just floats off it because the hitbox isn't approximated correctly, you know, that might not work. So I am excited about scalable wedges. I think it's going to be like really great. I'd also like to see them make the corner wedge pieces, like the, you know, the inverted pieces and the little triangular pieces. So you can smooth out all the corners of your vehicles. But I think scalable wedges is a good start, especially for making ramps to go in and out of your bases. Along with the plasma drill, they added the plasma saw. Don't really know too much about it, but introducing the plasma saw, the saw that is sharp enough to go through trees like butter and even cut through crystal rocks. I don't know if crystal rocks are a new type of rock or if that's just like the rocks that we already have. But why stop there? The plasma saw can also be used to boost your creation's defenses against those pesky bots. So it seems like it's just a better version of like the standard saw. A um, bunch of different concept art pieces here as to what it could potentially look like. Personally, I don't I don't think this one looks bad. The one in the, you know, the kind of hand-drawn one. I think that looks pretty good. But anyway, it's just a, you know, plasma saw, a more powerful saw. I'm not sure if that means you're going to have to build saws and upgrade them. And same with drills, build drills and upgrade them to plasma drills. Or maybe build plasma drills separate. It seems like all your mining vehicles are going to eventually be plasma tools, which will do stuff better and faster. I wonder if they'll consume electricity though. They may or may not. I'm not sure. It'd be kind of cool if they did. So it's like you get better mining, but it consumes more stuff as long as it's balanced, of course. But either way, I'm I'm excited to have like upgradable tools. I think that's going to be neat. And then we got this kind of cool dude here. Um, I don't like have any context. He kind of looks like a scout master that got half his face burnt off on a trip. He's got like the whistle. He's got the binoculars, the walkie talkie to talk to the other scout masters. But he's missing half his face because, like, there was an unfortunate campfire accident or something. Uh, and then, of course, we've got an adorable baby walk, which... Okay, I'm, I'm, a, I'm like, a terrible person, but the first thing I thought of when this, when I saw this picture, was... I wonder if the baby walk is going to get launched further off a catapult than a regular walk. And I'm, I'm not... I'm, I love animals, okay? I really do. But in Scrap Mechanic, cows are just so funny to launch places. They honestly, best thing ever. Either way, if we can breed animals, fantastic. I really hope Scrap Mechanic adds more NPCs and breeding capabilities for cows. One of the biggest problems with cows in Scrap Mechanic is if you want to make some of the advanced foods, you need meat. Um, getting milk is easy. You just have one cow, feed it, and you know, you get milk from it. But if you want the advanced foods, you need meat. And in order to get meat, you're going to have to breed cows and then, you know... Um, remove some of them to get meat and so that's just you know kind of kind of an interesting thought but adorable baby walk and um yeah excited to see if they add more npcs as well other than just walks other other creatures then like really it's just walks and glow bugs and then the bots i'd love to see 
more than just walks and glow bugs that you can use for your own benefit. And of course, more NPCs like this. Uh, finally, they added a fancy tuxedo. Uh, new outfit time this time. We're taking a break from all the workwear and decided to make a stylish tuxedo. Just a thing for mechanics who want to adventure in style. I'm pretty sure Dapper would really enjoy this because this looks, you know, very dapper. As usual, all parts for the tuxedo can be mixed and matched with other outfits for even more awesome outfit variations. And then, of course, the devs put a thing here where they're asking other people to go and comment on their community page if you have other outfit suggestions for them. So I encourage you guys, if you do have suggestions, go there, um, you know, make a comment. I'm not exactly sure what will happen, but of course, the link to the Scrap Mechanic Dev community page is in the description. You can click that, go check it out, and give the devs your suggestions. And that's it for this uh, for this update. They didn't really talk too much about a lot of things. I feel like a lot of Chapter 2 is going to be hush-hush. Um, they're going to show us, like, a few things that are exciting. But for the most part, they're just going to kind of, you know, only show us stuff that doesn't give away anything that you actually have to do. So it's like, here's a few new parts, here's a new outfit, you know, some new bots. But you really don't know how they're all going to interact with each other and how it's all going to come together in Chapter 2. And of course, we have no idea when Chapter 2 comes out. Uh, I'm super excited for it. I can't wait to play it in 2047. Uh, I'm just really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you guys have other things that you think I missed or things that, you know, other points of interest that you'd like to share with me, of course, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you all next time.